I'm not looking for an gonna, apology. This is gonna ruin my career, sir. You're under arrest or failed to signal lane change. I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change? Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home. Oh, now you're gonna go home? You just said you didn't want to go home. Now you wanna go home? Imagine a world where not all heroes wear capes. Instead, they wear badges and face the toughest battles within their own ranks. Yep, we're talking about when good cops stand up against corrupt cops. But what drives them to take such bold stance? How do these courageous acts impact their careers and personal lives? And most importantly, will their courage lead to reform? Or are they fighting a losing battle? Well, join us as we explore the riveting stories of officers who dared to speak out against corruption. Starting off with the case of Felipe Perez, a deputy sheriff from Los Angeles, caught off duty, driving at a whopping 134 miles per hour, way above the speed limit on Nevada's highways. And shockingly, his car didn't have a license plate. Now, the situation was handled by Trooper Ken Nickerson. The attitude of Felipe when Nickerson approached him to address his reckless driving was striking. Take a look. That's his speed. 134. Henry 62, 14, 10, 6. Marker 9, northbound north of no plates on a black Dodge Charger. Trooper Nickerson, I stopped you for reckless driving. Uh, 134 miles per hour is reckless. Really, sir? What was going down? Was that going that fast? As you saw, Nickerson successfully stopped Felipe's black Dodge Charger. As Nickerson approached the vehicle, he was met with a surprising scene. Not only was Felipe driving recklessly, but his wife and child were also in the car. What stood out even more was Felipe's apparent lack of awareness regarding his excessive speed. His reaction when confronted revealed that he seemed genuinely oblivious to how fast he had been going, which only compounded the gravity of the situation. Sir, I apologize. I'm, I'm an off-duty deputy sheriff from LA County, and I'm just in, in a hurry to go get to Vegas because it's an emergency. It's, you know, off-duty is not going to help you at 134 miles per hour. This one's going to sting. Here, Felipe tried to leverage his position by stating he was a deputy sheriff from Los Angeles to escape the consequences of his reckless driving. He mentioned his role in law enforcement, hoping it would influence Trooper Nickerson's judgment. However, Trooper Nickerson wasn't swayed. He remained steadfast in his commitment to upholding the law without bias. It was clear that traffic regulations are universal and apply equally to everyone, regardless of their profession. To ensure the safety of all road users, Nickerson's commitment to enforcing the law impartially meant that Felipe couldn't escape the consequences of his actions just because of his position. This highlights the importance of integrity in law enforcement, where upholding the law should transcend personal connections or job titles. I need your driver's license. This car's not registered yet. Yeah, it is, sir. Uh, Where's the license plate? Uh, you know what, sir? I, I haven't, uh, I received it, but I couldn't find it. I, I couldn't find so I'm gonna call it in. Dude, you're off duty. Come on. I know. You I... gotta get the plates on the car. All right, so I need your license, and let me have your temporary tag, at least. Sir, uh, I apologize, but... Uh, I'm not looking for gonna, an apology. This, this is gonna ruin my career, sir. Well, come on, man. You made that decision, not me. I'll be right back. As we saw, Trooper Nickerson quickly asked Felipe for his driver's license and inquired about the missing license plate. It was evident that Nickerson was concerned and wanted to ensure all legal requirements were met. Felipe, on the other hand, appeared increasingly uneasy. He claimed he had received the license plate but could not locate it. This explanation revealed inconsistencies in his story and heightened Nickerson's suspicions. When asked for his license and temporary tag, Felipe pleaded, fearing job loss. However, Trooper Nickerson was unsympathetic, replying firmly. This highlights that obeying traffic rules is crucial for everyone's safety, regardless of status. 
Nickerson's firm responses serves as a reminder that rules apply equally to everyone, emphasizing the importance of law enforcement officers setting an example. your license okay so this is just for the speed and the license plate it's out of the good springs justice court telephone number and address is here this date april 10th is a court date court's not mandatory you can okay. take care of it online or through the mail and okay. there's instructions on the back and just to be clear we do give breaks most of the time oh, to yeah. law enforcement but 134 man you got a child in that back seat okay you know, sir, I apologize, sir, and, and thanks for giving me a break. Okay, please drive safe. All right, thank you. thank you. Fortunately, Trooper Nickerson, after evaluating the situation thoroughly, chose not to escalate the charges further. Despite the serious nature of the offense, he decided against adding more severe charges that could have jeopardized Felipe's career as a deputy sheriff. This merciful decision spared Felipe from losing both his driving privileges and his career. Instead, Nickerson issued a ticket for reckless driving and not having license plates. Perez's case underscores why following traffic rules is vital, no matter who you are. It's about ensuring everyone's safety on the road and upholding the law consistently. Throughout this incident, Trooper Nickerson's actions demonstrated a steadfast commitment to justice and public safety. The case shows us that no one is above the law, and maintaining road safety is a shared responsibility. Moving on, let's talk about the case of Brittany Trevino and Officer Patrick Ackers. On September 6, 2023, Brittany Trevino was driving by Officer Patrick Ackers of the New Braunfels Police Department. He was in the middle of a traffic stop in New Braunfels, Texas. Brittany had a history with Officer Ackers. Several years earlier, he had forcefully detained her under questionable circumstances. Remembering this past encounter, Brittany decided to express her frustration. As she drove by, she raised her middle finger at Officer Ackers. The body cam footage from that day captures what happened next. Officer Ackers noticed Brittany's gesture and decided to confront her. What a great idea. The footage provides a clear view of how the situation escalated. Aren't police officers supposed to de-escalate situations? Hmm. And the story doesn't end there. At some point, the officers involved decided to turn off their body cameras. Now that's never suspicious. Thankfully, Brittany had the presence of mind to start recording the interaction on her cell phone. This cell phone footage became crucial in documenting the full scope of the encounter. Let's watch. Five two fifty six. If it's possible, could you make my location? PD two fifty six. Put me at the thousand forty nine of Gardenia. Thirty five is on Gardenia. Now, Officer Ackers claimed he pulled Trevino over for not signaling while changing lanes. 
not for putting up her middle finger. However, it's important to note that in 1989, the case of Texas v. Johnson, the Supreme Court's ruling protects gestures like the middle finger under the First Amendment. In Texas, there is a law against disorderly conduct. But the courts have clarified that such gestures are usually protected unless they provoke immediate violence. But in the 2015 case of Brown v. Wilson, the court clarified that giving the finger to an officer while offensive does not justify charges unless it leads to fighting words. Despite these protections, the Supreme Court's 1996 decision in Wren v. United States allows traffic stops if there is objective evidence of a violation, even if the officer's motive involves other reasons. So, even if Officer Ackers was upset by the gesture, the stop could be lawful if there was a traffic violation, like failing to signal. However, body camera footage shows Trevino did in fact signal, contradicting Officer Ackers. If Ackers had a reasonable belief of a violation, courts might still uphold the stop. Let's see. So this is that female Trevino. She flicks me off as I'm going back to the back of my patrol car, fails a single left hand to go into the left lane. She flicks me off, so I just wanted a second to make contact with her. How's it going? Officer Eggers, New Braunfels Police Department. Who you are. Okay. I know who you are. That's fine. Well, the reason why you be a... over for flipping you off. No, ma'am. The reason why... You are. you are retaliating against me. You turn your sirens on and everything ran over here like a crazy person. Okay. Well, ma'am, the reason why you're being contacted is you failed to signal lane change when you flicked me off. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and step out of the car. Step out of the car. I have three officers here. He's hurt me before. Please don't let him. Yeah, could you, would you mind, Henderson, go ahead and detain her? In cuffs? No, because he's, he's been to me. Okay, all right. Do you have any type of one? You're under arrest or failed to signal lane change? I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You guys just know this is... You guys just know it is. You guys know it is. You're under arrest. Grab my phone. Well, Officer Ackers approaches Miss Trevino and informs her that she's under arrest for allegedly failing to signal while changing lanes. Under arrest? In some states, officers have limited authority to make custodial arrests for minor traffic offenses. However, Texas law is different. Even though it seems small, Texas law allows officers broad authority to make arrests based on probable cause for any traffic violation. In Texas, not signaling before changing lanes is a misdemeanor under Section 545104 of the Transportation Code. Law enforcement officers can arrest individuals under Section 543001 if they believe an offense occurred. The Supreme Court's rulings in 2001, Atwater v. City of Lago Vista, and 2008, Virginia v. Moore, allow arrests for minor offenses if there's probable cause, even without violating the Fourth Amendment. This means Texas could enforce arrests for minor traffic violations, despite any state laws suggesting otherwise, as long as probable cause exists. You want me to transport, or you, you think better? Yeah, Danny, do. Danny, would you mind just transport? You don't have to do anything else other than transport. I'll be there. PD two B six. Can you go ahead and uh, get me next rotational record? That female is my custody. Uh, I believe it's going to be Brittany Trevino. Six for ten, one in custody at eight thirty nine. Yeah, she has a driver's license, but. I'm not turn this off. No. Well, she, she comes down the street, comes right towards me, and as I'm walking back by the car, didn't do nothing, she flicks me off. Mm -hmm. And then as she does that, she gets on the lane and fails a single lane change. You think it's going to be an issue? Mm -hmm. Keeping your history, right? Yeah. So, any other person you would write a ticket to, right? Yeah. That's how you have to treat every, every interaction. If you would normally write a ticket to this person for this, just because that in the past you've done this, this, and this, right? This is something that you would normally run a ticket for. Than a ticket for. Now, Sergeant Scott tells Officer Ackers to let Miss Trevino go, arguing that her actions usually result in a citation rather than arrest, citing a legal precedent from the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in Texas, specifically the 2021 case of Oliver v. Arnold. 
This case states that officers violate the First Amendment if they retaliate against someone for exercising their right to free speech. In cases involving claims of retaliatory arrest under the First Amendment, the presence of probable cause often weakens the claim, as ruled by the Supreme Court, Neves v. Bartlett in 2019. However, exceptions exist, such as when officers choose to arrest for minor offenses in response to protected speech. This exception aims to prevent misuse of arrest powers to silence those expressing their rights, highlighting the balance between law enforcement's duty and protecting constitutional rights. Yeah. You want me to go ahead and close the Yes. Yeah. I'm so let's write the ticket. Go uh, about it that way. Sounds good. All you're going to do is give her more ammo. Uh, All right. Yep. So write the ticket. Just fill it out. I didn't mind. Yeah, I did. Good to go. So I understand that you flicked the officer off. So my question was, did you flick the officer off? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing, right? Had had you just gone on about your day, right? Your intense hatred is causing you to do other things that is that is drawing attention to you. I'm not here to debate the situation with you. I watched the video. I, saw, I know everything that occurred. Okay? I know about the court stuff, everything that occurred. If Officer Akers had done anything wrong, he wouldn't be here right now. Right? That's 100% true. You need to move on and not be running around flipping people off. Right? I get it. That's your First Amendment if you want to flip people off. But what it did is it caused you to create a, to create a hazard into a traffic infraction right in front of an officer. If you choose to be defined by what happened to you in the past, then you will always continue to be that person. Regardless of what y'all's history is, you need to move along with it. Right? Finally, the fairness of policing is being questioned after receiving a citation and lecture from Sergeant Scott. Ms. Trevino left under unclear circumstances without contesting the ticket or indicating legal action. Officer Acker's behavior, chasing Ms. Trevino recklessly, possibly due to her exercising free speech, raises concerns. He might have even fabricated a traffic offense to justify his actions, and that's what the proof shows. Sergeant Scott intervened before Ms. Trevino's arrest, but turned off his body camera and blamed her for future retaliation, sparking criticism, understandably. His assurance of Officer Acker's innocence seems doubtful, given recent events. While Sergeant Scott prevented Ms. Trevino's jail time, he faltered in protecting her rights. Though spared jail, Ms. Trevino faced distress. Despite legal complexities, her trauma is evident. It would be wise for her to consider filing a complaint and exploring legal options. Lastly, let's take a look at a dramatic incident that unfolded on November 14, 2020. A 911 call was made reporting Officer Drew Scott Romo's aggressive and confrontational behavior with a security personnel. When off-duty officers arrived at the scene, they were faced with a tense situation. Watch this. Mike, you need to go. Let's go. You need to go. They don't want you here, so you have to go. It's simple. If you don't want to be in trouble with us, just go. That's it. Dude, I'm freaking on your side. They don't want you at the business, so you need to go. I'm on your side. I get that. But they don't want you here today, man. The officers arrived and tried to handle the situation calmly. They asked Romo to leave the area. Despite their polite requests, Romo seemed determined not to comply. His attitude was anything but cooperative, and it was clear that the situation could quickly spiral out of control. 
Take a look. On what? What am I uh, taking you out? What am I? I'm just trying to keep you out of jail. No, no, no. If you want to be a California cop and be a dick and you want to chest bump us, you can go ahead and do that. And guess where you're going to end up? In my fucking jail. Yeah, I want to know okay? where. You can either calm down and go home. What am I doing you're wrong? You're too intoxicated. You're trying to pick fights with people. Every club has asked you to leave. On what club? Times. Every club you've gone to. On what? What am I doing? I've removed you twice from two different clubs. Do you not understand that? What am I six o two? I don't know what that is. That's California code. I don't know what that six is. Six o two resume? I don't know what that is. What am I trespassing on? The tension escalated further, pushing the situation to a critical point. Officer Romo, showing no signs of backing down, was making things increasingly difficult for everyone involved, turning into a full-blown confrontation. This sudden shift in events made the scene increasingly volatile and dangerous. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home. Oh, now you're gonna go home? You just said you didn't want to go home. Now you want to go home? Serious? Now you want to go home. Let's sit him down. Dude, I have a law enforcement ID. You, sir, are a disrespect to our profession this evening. If you say it one more time, I'm going to hold you in custody and make you tell the judge in the morning that you have a law enforcement ID. You're a disgrace right now. So you need to shut your mouth before I call your supervisor and we go from there and you don't lose your job in California while you're visiting Arizona. I don't so, you, so you close your mouth and let us do our job now because you can't make adult what decisions. Job? My job is to take you to jail now because you can't be an adult. Have a seat. I have your... Have a seat. Okay. Have a seat. I'll, Sit down. I'll, I'll hold on. Sit down. Sit down? <laughs> yes. Kick your feet up. Now, even though Romo repeatedly claimed he was a police officer, the responding officers were unwavering in their commitment to carry out their duties. They stayed focused on their duty, enforcing the law without yielding to Romo's attempts to use his badge as leverage. This showed their dedication and commitment to the law irrespective of who was on the other side. It's great. Yeah, but I don't understand, Mom. Under arrest. When is the ball? Because you had a security guard asking you to leave and you kept swatting his hand. Bro, I'm under arrest. Bro, bar feud? When I told you? You told me what? You're so intoxicated, nothing's sinking in. Bro, you're seriously gonna fucking put me in this position? No, you put yourself in this position. No. Yeah, bro. See, this is the other part that's a disgrace to our profession that you're not catching. If you were a true cop and you cared about the blue, you would not put me in this position right now. You can go home when I asked you to. Okay? That's the position you put me in. I would have went home. Yeah, I do think you should have gone home. Even your, even your friend. As you can see, when the situation reached its peak, Romo was in disbelief over his arrest. He couldn't fathom that, despite being a police officer himself, he was being detained. A lieutenant had to arrive to clarify the situation to the hot-headed cop. The lieutenant's arrival was crucial in clarifying the tense situation and providing some order amid the chaos. This moment highlighted the importance of accountability within the force. But I don't know what the, the issue. We can also charge you with assault based on you batting the security guard. And I'll tell you what assault will do. Assault will get you terminated. So better course of action is to treat the guy who's being nice to you with a little bit of respect. He's not being nice to me, sir. He's not treating me with respect. That's why you have your day in court. I understand. I'm not. Here's the deal, though. I'm not afraid. Can tell you the truth. My, my advice to you is just sit down, be quiet. Totally, that's what I'm kill. doing. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. But I'm also trying to understand the charge. And I'm also they trying just to told understand you. We could charge you with disorderly conduct. They didn't tell me the charge, assault. though, sir. Okay. They didn't tell I'm me the charge. You, I'm telling it to you right now. I appreciate you telling me. Disorderly conduct and assault. Okay. I We're appreciate you telling me. We're choosing to just go with disorderly conduct because okay. you charge you with assault, you're probably going to get terminated. Okay. Uh, I understand that. I appreciate you telling me okay. that because I didn't understand that. Okay. And nobody told me that. Hey man, put one leg in. Okay. All right. I'll do it. One, two, three. Now, even while being detained, Romo continued to act erratically. His behavior was so disruptive that the officers had no choice but to follow their standard procedures for handling such cases. It was a clear sign that Romo was not handling the situation well, even under the authority of his peers. A facility in the correct term probably would be prisoner. Um, however, we're trying to get you released but you're not showing any signs of sobering up that allows us to believe that you can go out and act accordingly in society. From what I understand, you're dialing 911, you're continuously- I can't breathe, sir. You're continuously banging on the jail cell doors. Because I can't breathe. 
don't have anxiety. No, I'm completely understanding the anxiety part. I am sobering up. What do you want me to do? Well, I can't breathe in here. I understand that. I am ordered to inform you of this information. Upon your release, you are ordered to call Lieutenant Scott Blinn, and I will provide you his phone number. I, and I know phone. Okay, and you are ordered to call him immediately upon your release to report your actions. Officer Romo. In the end, Officer Romo faced charges of assault and disorderly conduct. He eventually pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct and was fined $650. However, the charges were later dropped. The legal consequences did not stick. This outcome might have one questioning the effectiveness of the system and holding law enforcement accountable for their actions. However, the responding officer's attitude in handling the situation is commendable, showcasing their commitment to uphold the law. After all, no one should be above the law. Not a regular citizen, not a police officer, not the president. Now, what do you think of these cases? Leave your answers in the comments section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys soon.